Did it start? No, it started. Okay. So welcome to Teacher Teaching Teachers. Um, a few of us here tonight. I don't know if we scared too many people away because we're going to be talking about the war and AI and all of it together. Anyway, hi. Glad to have you. Why don't we quickly do introductions and start with Sidhi, if, I, if I'm saying your name correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, I'm Sidhi Donda. Uh, I'm a senior at Hoppington High School, uh, just at the start of the Boston Marathon in Massachusetts. Cool, cool. Kylie. All right, Kylie Franzak. I'm a first year PhD student. I was a teacher at a couple of public schools here in Arizona before that. So now I've transferred into teaching English 101 and 102 at Arizona State University and a PhD student there. David. Um, my name is David Cole. I was a former writing instructor, fourth grade, ninth grade, twelfth grade college for about 15 years and then moved into technology. And it was there that I uh, found my way to the writing project and I have had the pleasure of working with them over the years on different tech related projects. And AI has shown up into everyone's life. And I've appreciated being here in this conversation on a weekly basis with Paul and you all to think it out. That's there you go. Jessica. I am Jessica Early, and I am a professor of English education, and I run the writing project site here at Arizona State University. And I've been a part of the writing project since I was a first-year teacher in 1999 in Portland. Come on up when you're ready. Yeah, good, good. I'm Apple excited there to you be go. in this group. Hi, Christina. Hi there. <clears throat> go, ahead. go ahead with introductions, Christina. <laughs> Oh, okay. Hi, I'm Christina. Um, I work with the National Writing Project, and I am making tea while we're talking. So that's a good thing. Yeah. And I'm Paul Allison. And thank you, thank you for coming and thinking about all of this. Sidhi, he could, can I turn to you right away and say I, I asked you before we turn the recording on if you were following the um, Israel Hamas war and what your what people around your age are talking about. Could you just kind of kick us off with that? Yeah, sure. So I would say there's definitely, even like amongst like my friend group, there's definitely like a range of like, I think people who are following it on the news. I have some friends who are like every day checking in with the news, watching uh, the television to check it out and are really like at endo at home. So like engaging in those conversations. Uh, I would say I have some friends who like weren't like really sure what was happening until maybe like a week ago until we started talking about it in school. So I think mm -hmm. there's like definitely like a range of people that I know. And we are, which I thought was interesting is we're talking about it in school. You mean there's a school. range of, of interest and in, in how much they're paying attention? Yeah. 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 But, and I think it's some of that's like growing a little bit more as we're starting to talk about it more in school, like even with like our teachers. How's that going? How, how are they introducing it? What are they? Yeah. So I'm taking two classes where we're talking about it. So one is uh, AP Gov, and I would say my Gov teacher, like a part of gov our government class is politics. So that is like we've spent like an entire class period, multiple class periods talking about this um, from all different sides. And it's kind of like very much like a group discussion uh, in that class. It's very much kind of like what side and I wouldn't say like what side are you on but definitely like classmates have chosen like sides and are trying to like advance like that position. And the teacher is like very like open with that, fine with that, like pushes back to make us think about different sides. And then I have another different another class, which is an elective I take, uh, honors global citizenship. And that's totally like the opposite. From the beginning, the teacher said, so we're gonna discuss like the historical context of this issue, but we're not gonna spend our time discussing like who's right or like who's wrong. Hmm. Cool. Very cool. Um, other thoughts about what's what's been happening and as Bob joins us here? Hi, Bob. Today in, in Arizona, mm -hmm. I just heard on NPR that Tom Horn, our superintendent of schools, who's beyond nightmare, he came out and he's saying that Amnesty International and um, I don't I can't remember the other group, but it's as known as Amnesty International. But these organizations are not welcome at Arizona schools anymore because they've been coming to campus and talking about the war. Um, and they're showing more than pro-Israel side. They're complicating the situation. So he's kicking them off all school campuses. Um, and have you heard, heard how teachers are reacting to that? Or 
Um, I've heard that there's students protesting. I haven't mm. heard anything about more. I just heard that happen today. So. All right. Cool, cool. Bob, do you want to introduce yourself and just key us in on what you're thinking about these days quickly? <laughs> uh, just happy to be here seeing friendly faces and uh, excited to engage in conversation. Uh, Christina, you want to add anything or should we jump into a workshop kind of thing or, yeah. Um, I just thought that, um, I really appreciated CD sharing what they're doing in school. So it's really helpful. And I was just wondering where you went to school. Okay. Yeah, you can uh, answer that again. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm a, I'm a senior at Hopkinton high school. So in Massachusetts, right outside of Boston. Fred Haas is a student, um, so yeah. Great, thank you. I mean, that's not the only thing you are. But <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> I'm just teasing. So, um, so we here's I, I want to kind of jump us into a workshop model here, if I could, asking you to move off using your cursor, your up and down, uh, back and forth. I will let you know a little more about what's on this in this room. There are 10 tables. Each of them is a thinking partner. Um, and at each table, each thinking partner, I've, I've, to give you an idea of how that thinking partner thinks, um, there are three examples of um, how they respond to poetry, how they respond to an article, and how they respond to a first-person um, narrative. Okay, fair enough. So you click on those, you'll kind of see them. What I would like you to do is go get, become an expert in one of them, and then come back to this group and kind of represent their point of view. Does that assignment sound clear enough? Yeah, you get some thumbs up. Okay, um, on the left side, <laughs> City so mentioned sides, but on the left side are, are mainly Gazian, Palestinian, uh, pro Hamas, in one case down at the bottom, but um, points of view. Um, and, and we can talk when we come back about how we built these. Um, and I'll say very, very quickly that um, OpenAI on Tuesday. Um, created a new model, and we have an amazing amount of context. You can build whole articles, and uh, anyway, there's there's been a big change in in what we're able to do. I'll say that quickly, but then, and we can go back to that. And then on the right side are mainly Israeli and or Zionist perspectives. Um, I we why don't you so and the numbers? I don't. I I wasn't sure how to do this. But why don't you go off and find a table that you're comfortable with? Either choose a perspective that you think you might agree with or one you might not agree with. Um, way up at the top, for, uh, and I'll, I'll, let me keep introducing for a little bit. Um, again, remember the plus and minus key will let you zoom in and out so you can see what's here. So Tan Coates is a Palestinian supporter. Uh, Tishbi in the right side is the commentator who is a Zionist perspective, right? And then you have those kind of perspectives. Again, Palestinian on the left side, Israeli on the right side. So why don't you go see if you can find a table and I'll guide you and ask you if you're okay there. And then I'll remind you what you're gonna do. So move around with your arrow keys to move left and right up and down until you come back to the center of the room hey bob's back no idea how that that's good, good no idea how this is going to go but let's try <laughs> the um what i'd love for you to do is kind of just represent what you're feeling about the war um, being that person that you just spent some time very, very briefly getting to know. Um, anybody want to start us off? I think if somebody could start us, we will be okay. Well, I can share a few perspectives from the standpoint of a poet. 
and the, um, the inadequacy of words to truly capture truth and the, the kind of underlying human conditions at times. But um, in an effort to capture the current reality in this war, I, I, I rewrote a poem that I, that I had written um, called Palestine A to Z, and I added you know, an attempt to, to capture the human condition in this even starker, more tragic context. Um, and then I, I reacted to an article about the war, and then I reacted to another person's poem. And I, I, I feel the same way in all of them that, um, that all humans are connected and, and our experiences are all connected. And this incredible loss that is happening in this war is impacting all of us universally. And um, I, I hope that I can offer a plea from the perspective of a poet that, um, you know, humans are clinging to life and their dreams and souls are seeking solace and dignity and that we can continue to have a space amidst the politics and the, and the firepower of, of destruction to still dream of peace and because we're all yearning for it. Jump in, who wants to go next? I can go next. I am yeah. an actress. I'm an Israeli actress and journalist and activist. And I am um, ardently pro-Israel. And um, I believe in um, thinking about the complexity of the Jewish people and the history of Jews as their unique people and see it as problematic as ta, ta, ta Coates, who I deeply respect as a writer and thinker. Um, I listen to his perspective and voice and um, think that it is really problematic to compare the situation in Israel um, and the situation of the Palestinians um, to apartheid or to think that you know, because you have been oppressed as a people, what this oppression is or why it is, and that it's far more, it's a really complicated situation grounded in its own history and culture and peoples, and that that needs to be considered. Oh, and one other thing that, sh that I, um, as this person believe is that, um, when considering what's going on in the Gaza Strip um, and what has been happening for years in terms of Israel security and um, fighting for sovereignty, it, that much of what's happened has been happening because Israel is trying to uh, provide safety for its people and Hamas is a constant threat working every day to do what they did on October 7th. Thank you. Tanahisi, do you want to jump in or? Um, sure. Um, the exercise, I read several of uh, the AI generated Tanahisi coach reactions. Um, and across the board, the, it's, a, the, it's a conversation about oppression and injustice and the not just the inequity, but the violence of the inequity and what its effects are on communities is something that people can't look away from, especially given how it reflects and resonates with uh, the, some of the lived black experience for black Americans. And it's one more example of how this kind of experience is tragically and unfortunately ubiquitous. And it asks us to think about that in a larger way. Um, there were a couple, there was a poem, a reaction to the poem, A Village as well, and again, it's speaks to the way that it's a call to recognize suffering that happens universally and that we need to act as a global community in response to this kind of violence and incursion and all the traditions that go with it. We can't simply accept um, one position over another given what's on the, what we see on the ground. Um, 
there was a lot of detail in some of the comments about experience that Coates had, that I had as Coates, uh, traveling to Palestine and traveling to the West Bank and seeing the disparity and going through checkpoints and experiencing the way that people talk about it, the way that guards talk about it, the way that storekeepers talk about their experience, their lived experience, makes this case and again and again. Lastly, uh, in response to some of the um, really committed Israeli defenders who claim that um, people in the West, in particular in the universities, are being played uh, in the way that they are supporting Palestine, um, I feel like it's important to be able to have a defense or have a position that um, acknowledges other people's human rights as a baseline, as a starting point, and that that can never be very far from where we begin our conversations. That's what I took. Great, thank you. I can go next. Um, I was Mary, I'm a Palestinian American who grew up in Gaza. Um, and I had, so yeah, a, a poem. Um, what else was there? Um, sorry, the poem. Um, Colin story and then just an article. Um, and the one thing that kind of keeps coming up in a lot of this is that um, the way that the news and everybody is portraying this or the way that people are looking at um, just the, the lives that are being lost is that we're weighing, we're weighing one life more heavily than the other. So even though people are on the side of Israel and saying that what they're doing is justified because we did what we did first. Um, the core issue here is really that humanity is what's at stake. Um, and so they kind of keep going back to, um, you know, just the ruin and the destruction and how it, the only place that we as Palestinians have ever known as home is being destroyed and being invaded. Um, and that because that's the only place that we've ever known home and I still have family there, um, that somebody else trying to go in and take that away from us is not a fair, a fair way to look at this. Um, and that now we're the ones who are being persecuted, we're the ones who are being shoved out of our homes that we were essentially there first, I guess. Um, and now we're the ones who are being persecuted and killed as a result. And um, there's not a lot of a lot of anger in the way that the voice is presented. It's it's really uh, it's it's tragic. It's really it's just it's it's sad at its core that this is this is what's happening and this is what it's come to and how one sided um, the argument and the fight really feels. Thank you. Um, I uh, took. Golan's uh, pers perspective. Golan is uh, so, he's, uh, he's 44 years old. He was trained in the Israeli army and had weapons and fought back, but he lost his home. His family, um, he, he was on a kibbutz where he was born, um, where I was born. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not very good at this. Anyway, it, you're all better at the night. The, where I was born, and uh, I am now homeless. I read about what's happening in um, Gaza, and it rips me, my heart, and, and I totally understand what it means to lose your home, because I lost my home. My family doesn't have a place to live, and my community was totally disrupted. So I totally get it. Um, don't know what to do about it kind of um, against both sides in some level. Just wish we could be families and communities kind of having empathy and understanding each other. Um, yeah, next, who wants to jump? Uh, I can go. Uh, so uh, my person, or I am a mother uh, to a one month old. My husband, uh, while well, my kibbutz was attacked, 
in the middle of the night. At first, I thought I was just hearing rocket launches that I'm used to, um, but then it got more violent and my husband was taken from me. My one month old daughter and I, we hid in the bushes until we felt it was safe. And then I hid behind a like dryer machine for a while. Uh, I really I just want my husband to come back home. I want uh, whatever can be done to release the hostages. I think my husband's a hostage. My cousin is also a hostage and I just want the hostages released and my family to come back home. You actually did Shaylee, correct? Yeah. Good, 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 good. And Christina, did you do Shaylee also? I did, yeah. Okay, that's okay. Just go ahead and tell it again if you want. Yeah. Um, well, that's a good description of my story. Um, I also feel just despair primarily. And when I read, um, you know, a first person account by Tasneem, who is um, keeping um voice messages or i don't know what it is whatsapp messages about what's happening in gaza i feel despair i understand i have empathy because i feel such despair right now um all right anybody else want to jump in with anything else from your perspective first and then we'll break out All right. Uh, thank you. I so the hope here is that this would be a sort of an and a, it's sort of it's based on Deborah Appleman's notion of a tea party where you take characters' roles and kind of come in the room and kind of say from that perspective what what's going on. But it's sort of, it's it's um as you can tell it's kind of been hyper realized if I can use that word by AI. Um, uh, why don't we just stop and say what that was like for you and, and or what questions you have. I don't have a, a direction to go here, so I'm happy. I, I totally trust this group to push us in the direction we might want to go. I have a question. Sure. Which was the which was the AI part? Was that like the comments on the side with the AI part? Or like how, how was it like generated? Yeah, so the... Um, if you click on the flag right above you there, you would go to a collection of, um, right? And there are five, is it five? I think so, yeah. There are five um, first person accounts and then there are two commentators, right? Um, and I just simply in a prompt said, be this person here's a speech or here's here's a, an article or here's an interview that this person gave, use that as your example. And then, but then go look at the other things and comment on that the way you would comment on it. Did that make sense? Yeah. Um, and Paul, I, yeah. I had also opened something called study group. Was that something we were supposed to look at? Here. You can. So, yeah. So, in the study, so there's a link right next to Christina. Let's, should we look at I that must together? I clicked on it by accident. It's okay. I just didn't know. So, that's another way in. Oh, so let me also say so, the what the study group does is, is each of the, each of the AI characters, um, thinking partners, just addresses the question can there be peace? Right. And, and you kind of can, that's another way to kind of get to know who they are and what they might be thinking. Um, there are three others. There's, there's a more abstract Hamas scholar and uh, Zionist scholar, and then there's a dialogue as well. Um, everybody read the same poem. So one thing we, we could do also, we sort of did this last week, but it's changed a little bit, but is is kind of see how different people take that poem on um so there's that questions thoughts i don't know where to go next do you want to well, one thing go ahead yeah. one thing i just thought was really fascinating because at first i had to just get oriented but that's yeah. like anything with a workshop and then mm -hmm. i started reading the original texts to get mm -hmm. a sense of those 
um, from my person. And then I read the AI generated responses. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was really, f at first I was like how, I was kind of cynical about it. Cause I was like, how am I gonna get anything from the AI? And cause I just read the original and maybe I just need to think about that myself. But then I actually found it really layered and helpful to see what the AI said in response to your question. And it helped me see the original piece in a different way. Um, and then it also helped me see the issue in a more complicated way through the lens of my person. But then we also extend that through the Tea Party. But I, I thought it was fascinating, the layering of experience as a reader using the AI. And I found the AI helpful and I didn't, and I kind of thought I wouldn't, and I was surprised that I did. I had the same reaction. I, I, I read my first article and then I was like, wait a minute, I should go look at the source to kind of get my bearings. Because whenever I encounter these AIs, it's as though I'm in a hall of mirrors all of a sudden. And I was trying to say, wait a minute, where is this synthesis, these responses? Because it appropriates all these cues and transitions and it's like a prepared speech. And the speech, of course, is based on somebody on some other grounding insights. And so it was helpful to go read that and scan it. And then when I went back to the documents, as you were saying, Jessica, I found that much more interesting and in some respects engaging because I could, it's as though I was processing a couple levels of thinking and understanding about the core subject. And I was seeing the nuance of the positioning of the Coates voice relative to a poem, relative to a really adamant Israeli defender relative to an article. And it was it was helpful to sort of situate that in that way. So yeah, I, I'm in the same camp as you are with that, very much. My experience was driven by the, the task, Paul, that you structured for us, which was to try to represent to my colleagues a voice. So I went into this really trying to understand the voice in 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 the most kind of essential ways to try to bring that back. I was aware it was an AI voice, but I was mostly just trying to connect what I thought was most meaningful in that voice. And I read the text, but it didn't really impact me either way. It really was a non a non player. For me, it was really the voice and trying to figure out what in this voice can I bring to my colleagues to represent that perspective? It, it could have been an AI generated or it could have just been, you know, a voice that you would paste it in there and it, it really wasn't a factor. It was just that task. And I enjoyed it, but it really didn't feel like an AI activity on any real level. It was, it was felt like, how do I try to represent the core of a really important voice. I resonated with this voice a lot personally. Hmm. Bob, remind me, what was your what was your I was Mozab the, the Palestinian poet. Right. Okay. I wonder, it's interesting to think, you know, in the voice of a poet, there's an authenticity and an immediacy in terms of the language a poet brings to any kind of conversation versus a critic, right? And uh I I I couldn't immerse myself in the in the in the Coates voice the way you obviously immersed yourself in the poet's voice. I wonder if that's if that's mostly me or if that's something about the way that these people speak in relation to their understanding and their sensibility. And if the AI, and the AI, if the AI ends up reflecting that or it's interesting. You, you you felt good with the voice. You liked the AI voice as a representation of something. It felt yeah, I did. It, I, I, I was having a Joseph Campbell experience. Like I was like, <laughs> you Excellent. know, like what? What's yeah, what do you mean by that? Yeah. yeah. Oh. This, it was like, so what's the story this poet um, has oh. to, to, to bring to this group? Um, with, I'm sort of curious what City thinks too, because I, with Shaley, 
the react i mean what what was interesting to me i think is because her she has a one month old and her husband was they think kidnapped um because they haven't found a body so um she expresses a great deal of empathy to other suffering because she's suffering so much right she's expressing her suffering and 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 the ai ends up expressing you know empathy for that suffering um uh from other people yeah. um and i was so so what's interesting i guess what's interesting to me is that like you can see the empathetic position you can see empathy at play right it allows you to see this empathetic thing happening um i went back to the original source because i was like you know what's I, I just was kind of trying to understand a little bit more of her you know maybe political positioning or um i mean she says that when asked how to get her husband back she says you know they whatever they need to do to get him back um and then and she's not addressing the political situation she's just in despair right so so that's just interesting and it's kind of potentially useful i think to see this sort of like empathy the empathy across um so yeah City Reddit. Anyway, what are you so. thinking? Yep. Yeah, I, I think this is a really powerful exercise. I think, like, I don't think, like, the only one thing I thought was interesting is I saw there was like a, a, a Hamas scholar and a Zionist scholar like speaking back and forth on that, and mm -hmm. I think that's like really cool from like an intellectual perspective because i don't think a conversation like that will ever like really like happen at least in this moment in time perhaps but like my like one i think like fear or skepticism is like i guess like how true do you know these like conversations to be and like you brought up like the point of empathy um and you like went back to the source to see if that kind of i think like and i also went back to the source to like see if that kind of like came true so like my question is like you like there's ai generations are coming from these sources but like i think my fear is is that true emotion like being captured like does that person really have empathy or is like the ai interjecting that empathy and i think like that's like kind of just something to be like cautious of yeah. right i mean Good i, I even if it's a simulation so i was thinking of it like ends up being a simulation of empathy right we can't yeah. necessarily we don't know if this person is yeah would be empathetic in this way or not so but but is there is there a benefit to simulating empathy to be able to see it right or read it or whatever you know, this that yeah it's interesting. i i think there definitely is like i think at least like I think if we did an exercise like this in like one of my classes, I think it'd be really powerful because I know people have very like specific positions, like whether it's very pro-Palestine or very pro-Israel. And I think to like have like the opposite side and like kind of like get into the minds of the real people who are affected, like whether it's true or false, I think that like whether these are like true personas or not, I think that's somehow irrelevant. It just like get, lets you see like the, under, the actually understand and see the other perspective in a very like almost intimate way. I do have to say, like a number of weeks ago, Paul, um, we did something with a reading and AI. Hey, you all pushed us in this direction, so yeah. Yeah, ahead. and then yeah. you've totally gone here, and it's worked. I mean, you because we read something and we were like, wait, this is almost offensive because it it has this doesn't sound like Hamas. This doesn't sound like a soldier. This doesn't, and this does. Like it's much more the experience of a tea party, but with a different kind of layer from the AI. Um, so I, I, I have to commend you, Paul, for the work doing that, because I think it's well, moved you know, it in a really powerful uh, way. Go ahead, Bob. From a purely kind of intellectual analysis, I'm one wanting to know design prompts that were created to create the voices that we 
just experienced. So, so that's one desire I have is to say, okay, if I'm really trying to understand what's going on in this exercise, I need to know how that voice was created. Um, and that, that's the design prompt. And the other question I have is the nomenclature of thinking partner versus voice or character. And I, I think for, mm -hmm. for this exercise, and I know we have to pick something, but I, I, I'm, I'm wondering if really the thinking partner, that's a, a different kind of entity because this isn't about thinking a partner for me per se. It's about a voice in the room that I don't have access to but now I, you know, that I wouldn't have access to without, you know, this, this, this character or this voice. So like AI is giving me a character that I can now interact with or try to engage with. And it's not, it feels different than a thinking partner. So, yeah. So one of the, one of the things this pushed me back to do, and, and Jessica, you mentioned a couple of weeks ago, I think that there's this old writing project thing where we do dialogue of authors kind of thing. And so I went back to see where that was, and and it, and it comes out of Moffat, and Moffat's notion is that, um, you know, thinking is a dialogue of, of of voices in our head, right? So I would uh, just add that to what you just said, Bob, a little bit. That for me as a reader, having these seven voices around when I pick up the New York Times tomorrow morning, I. I think about, oh, what would Shay Lee say about what happened, you know, or what would, what would ta Coates say, or what would that Israeli actress say, right? So having those voices in my head changes the way I read and think about things, I think. So Paul, just, just to stay on that question, I mean, if, if you were running a class, you're running a class here, so to speak, mm -hmm. and instead of having, handing out a reader, with the primary sources and asking us all to absorb the primary material, you're asking it. You've asked us to inhabit a character or a voice, uh, and and the, and that's a different, more immediate sort of perspective, and it affects us differently, and it moves us differently than just picking up a reader and trying to think critically and resummarize and paraphrase. Was that was that the explicit intention on your part? Was to say, what happens if you absorb information? through a persona versus through a critical lens or an interpretive lens where you're digesting information? What if you're obliged to encounter a personality in that? I'm just, it's an, right. it's an interesting move. It's helpful. And I just, and, and just to, just to say, so there's, there's a collection now and you, yeah. anybody can add a collection of articles that when I, when I go to ask AI, on that list will be Golan. And I can ask Golan, what do you think about this paragraph, right? right. And he'll mm -hmm. give me his thoughts about it um, and his perspective in some way. And, and we're, we're sort of experts in one of them, but you know, we could add others and so forth. J just what, I, I, it, it was a t j to answer your, the question that Bob asked first about like, what's the prompt design? I just want, it's it's incredibly simple. Um, although the model changed on Tuesday and I had to go back and change the first paragraph. God, it's uh, interesting. But um, so it just says, be this person. And then there's a description of the person. And then it says, stay in role. It says, address the question. And then it says, and use this speech or this interview as an example of how you would respond and just mm -hmm. pasted the whole thing there, right? Mm -hmm. So I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> um, I don't think we would have been able to do that a month ago. So that's an interesting thing to be thinking about as well. So that's, and then at the end, uh, worth noting at the end, and mo many of you pointed to this, we did make a link to the original so that so you can see where it all comes from. That's all kind of in the design. That's that's some answer, Bob. And it, you can always go on to the thinking partners yeah. and and see what they look like. But or I could send you some of that. Other thoughts or questions though? Um, looking at the clock. Um, yeah. I have a quick question. 
So Please. if you're using like, like I know like I've like kind of exclusively like only used ChatGPT, so I don't know how it works with others. But if you're like using ChatGPT or whatever chatbot you're using, like I know like for ChatGPT, there's like blocked, I think at like 2020, like two years back, it's like stopped, like it, the history only goes to that point. Like, do you think that like affects how like these voices come out? He's like, it's assuming it doesn't have like the context of like the current war that's happening. Very good question. First of all, I want to recommend that you move to other things other than ChatGPT. Okay. <laughs> um, and and now Comet is one of those things um, okay. because we're using the same engines that they use, but it doesn't go through that vanilla boring guy that ChatGPT is, right? Um, yeah. We kind of interrupt that flow and say, okay, instead of that, be Tasneem, right? And or be this or be that, right? So. That's one answer. The, and, and there are ways to use, I mean, David and I did an experiment with a thing he did on ChatGPT, then I put it in now comment, and you can kind of compare and, and look at those two. But so that's, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm talking too much. That's my favorite topic is ChatGPT. But, um, sorry, uh, but that, that wasn't the, oh, your, your other question, interesting, the model that they just opened up, again, I keep saying this on Tuesday because it is shocking, um, actually goes until April 2023. Okay. Um, so that's really interesting. But then when we put in the articles from <coughs> from now, it's, it's using that information too. So okay. yes, some caution there is, is absolutely important. But yeah, the, okay. <laughs> uh, last thoughts or questions or, or directions or. I feel like I've been a little quiet today, but I just, <laughs> well, I want to, I feel like I say this every time, but the unit that we're in right now in my 101 class is writing to negotiate in the entire, so I feel like that's, that's kind of where I'm coming at when I'm looking at this. And I found myself doing the very thing that I'm asking my students to do right now and being able to negotiate a variety of perspectives with these thinking partners. So I really enjoyed that and found myself, I'm, I find myself very, I guess, honestly, uneducated and therefore sort of in the middle on this topic. And so because of that, then, you know, I found myself going into this or looking at a couple of the different, um, when I finished reading mine, I was scrolling through and reading some of the other comments from well, the other Well, that's the hope. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and it's it, yeah. it's fascinating. I agree. I think that you've done a really fantastic job at getting some of the emotion in there while still being able to negotiate and have a civil conversation, which I think is really important for a topic like this, and especially if we're thinking about using this in an educational setting. Um I'm, I'm having a lot of ideas and the wheels are all turning about how I can use this in a classroom. And so thank you for that. This is really, really helpful and really beneficial to get this and everybody else's perspective. Can I just add one thing about that? If I, I would want an, one other piece Good. added, which is I have a whole week until next Wednesday. So go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. But after reading, like going in and reading and engaging with the materials, we came mm -hmm. back and spoke, which is really effective and powerful. But I think if I did this with students, right. I would want them to write first. Like do so I do think I would wa want them to write from that perspective and I write like that. using the voice and agency. And then they could read that or talk from that, but then having that there, um, and then even after that, after sharing, like we did with the tea party, I would want students to write a reflection. We all spoke and reflected, um, but I, I, we know how to do yeah, that yeah. really well. <laughs> but I no, think no, that would also be yeah. really interesting. It's great suggestions. The, um, Christina mentioned it, but there is a, um, and it's, if you go to the uh, collection, it's the link right at the top. It takes you to the simple question. There's no text involved, right? It's just a question that says, do you think peace is possible? And then each of them answers. That's another place for writing because students could 
answer that question themselves before they read what the you know, thinking partners do and then read the thinking partners and then reply to anyway. So there's a lot of writing there that's possible as well. Well, and yeah, so Paul, if we wanted to, we can, like, once we ask the AI thinking partner, once we ask it a question and it gives us the response that we all went through and read, we can we can engage in a conversation with it and ask it a question based on what it said, and it'll give us continued responses, right? That's correct. Okay. And I and think that... You, it, it, you could actually use AI. <laughs> Sorry. But yes, you could do that yourself, and I don't want to take away from that point. No, that's, I think that, that yeah. yeah, I think that would be, yes, for time's sake, I see why we couldn't do that. But I think that could maybe be something beneficial for us to kind of see how it can maybe act as, like Bob was saying earlier, how it might actually be able to act as a thinking partner. And if the the name holds true to what it can do. Yeah, Kylie, I just want to put a big, you know, high five on that point. Like you just named what I was struggling to, to say, what's missing? What's missing is interaction. We had the interaction in terms of our analysis and sharing with, with our peers, but we didn't get to interact with the, with the voice of the character. And that could have been a really great process to explore. Mm -hmm. That's a great so idea. So that could be a prompt. Really important, yeah. The, Very um, important. Uh, I, I just technically want to break down for, just to say that if you if if you take the whole article and believe it or not, as of Tuesday we can do this. I keep saying that, but it's it's kind of amazing. Um, as of Tuesday, you can take the whole article of the New York Times, right, and have a partner respond to it. But then you could say, okay, that's what Golan says. Then you could say, what does Tasnim say back to Golan? And what happens when you do that is it takes the whole article again. It it ingests Golan's response, and then it it adds in Tasneem's perspective, right? And so, yes, we should interact with it ourselves, but you can also keep going a little bit with the AI, just to know that. There's way too much. Um, I totally, totally appreciate how you push and make us think in this group. So I just want to say thank you to all of you. And um, yeah, see if you can find it a moment to keep playing with these things during the week and then come back and we can talk. Uh, I mean, I'm okay doing a workshop like this, but I like talking too. So yeah, <laughs> thank you Great. so much. Thanks yeah. all. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Thanks, Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Paul. Thanks.